Hi there, I'm Beth Green, otherwise known as Granny Rocks. And I'm Sweet Baby James, otherwise known as James Maynard. And I am so happy to be here tonight to share with you some thoughts on this anniversary of the birth of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. That thoughts that I hope are going to be helpful to all of us. So mm -hmm. before we get into that topic, which is, oh, I forgot to tell you the topic. Do we also have a dream? You know, you've had this great speech, I have a dream. Do we also have a dream? What does it look like? And does it need to transform? Mm -hmm. Before I get into that, however, let me introduce you to Sweet Baby James, who's going to introduce you to our show. Welcome to Inner Revolution, Changing the World from the Inside Out. And we air every Monday and Wednesday evening, 6.30 p.m. Pacific, where Granny Beth shares her wisdom, her wit, and her very uncommon sense. So take it away, Granny. Yes, thank you so much. By the way, I just got a comment from a, a young man in Ethiopia who said that I remind him of his grandmother and he followed our page. So isn't that cool? <laughs> so we have a uh, hi, Beth and James from Todd. And hi, hi Todd. Todd. So happy to see you tonight. So, uh, oh, Todd said great topic. Oh, goody. So I have been thinking about this. You know, first of all, I want to tell you that I was alive and kicking as uh, was Sweet Baby James when um, Martin Luther King gave his speech uh, at the nation's capital on August 28, 1963, the very famous I Have a Dream speech, which many of you know, but the occasion of that was for a march on Washington for jobs and freedom. And as you also may or may not know, on April 4th, 1968, he was, in a, he was assassinated by a man who did not share that dream. See, and that is the problem, is that we don't know how to share our dreams for the highest good of all, including us. Mm -hmm. So we stop assassinating each other. And I'm going to explain exactly what I mean by this. So first, I want to excerpt that speech into a couple of lines that I thought were the most generally uh, applicable. So he said, among other things, I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Of course, today he would have said men and women and trans and everybody in between. Amy said, hi, working late tonight, but we'll listen later. Love you both. Hi, Amy. Then he said, I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. Mm. Now that is really moving, isn't it? Yeah. That we will end this divisiveness among us and that we will come together in a mutually supportive way. He said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Yes, and that obviously applies to more than skin color. It's nationality, it's, it's, uh, it's religion, it's, it's gender identification, it's sex, it's everything. And Nick said, happy to get to watch this topic. Oh, thank you, Nick. Thank you so much. And he went on to say, and remember, he said many more things, but I'm just putting in some excerpts. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places shall be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. So now what is that dream about? That last thing is that we have real equality in our world, not sameness, but that some people are not above others, but that we are all. So whether you live in a society that has big income inequality or you live in a society 
that has a caste system or you live in a society that has very clear class divisions, that all of that will be gone. So that, you know, it looks like those who are above are brought down and those who are down will be brought up. But actually, it's really about the highest good of all, that we all get to be well treated. Well, now I want to talk to you about that. What kind of dream was Martin Luther King talking about? He was talking about the kind of dream that transcended the personal and included everyone. And many of us have been counseled to follow our dreams. But how many of us have been counseled to follow the dreams that transcend the personal and include everyone and recognize that that is how our dream will also be fulfilled? What kind of dreams do we, are we generally speaking encouraged to follow? So, and can we transform them into the kind of dream that Martin Luther King shared with us that day? So let's look at some, and I hope you enjoy this little trip down dream lane with me. I've only picked three examples, but I, you know, I could have gone on. One, I have a dream that I will be in the finals of America's Got Talent. <laughs> right? Do you think we could transform that dream into I have a dream that every child adult and old person has an opportunity to develop their God-given talents. Yeah, that's much better. Right? And, and what would that require? Here are just some of the things. Equal access to education. Equal access to opportunities. Equal access to clean water so that our children, some of our children's brains are not stunted, equal access to clean food, free of pesticides and contamination. Do we have that in our world today? No. Obviously not, right? Okay, here's dream number two. I have a dream that I will become homecoming queen and be adored by all. <laughs> <laughs> you noticing anything about that dream? So, ego, 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 ego. So could we transform that dream into I have a dream that every person, young and old, feel important and cherished for who they are? And what would that require? A shift in our value system from external appearances to internal qualities. A shift in our values from competition to mutual support. A, a shift in the reward system in our nation and in all of our nations in our world where people are rewarded not for who they are, but for how much the society values their contribution. Like, why does the CEO make more money than the school teacher, right? Or the full-time housewife for that matter. Okay, let's try one more dream, guys. I have a dream that I can retire at the age of 45, 62, 75, uh, 80, 90. Will I ever retire? I don't think so. <laughs> Could we transform that? dream into i have a dream that everyone has a chance to rest and rejuvenate every day instead of killing themselves till they reach that point where they have to retire or can retire right that we can work outside the home until it's time for us to develop other parts of ourselves and spend less time doing those things and doing other things instead and what would that collective dream require? This is that if everybody would have this. Well, a different attitude towards the work-life balance. So we are each nurtured and rejuvenated every day of our lives. 
and we don't like go crazy until the weekend and then have a drink or go to the gym and wrench our back because we've been sitting around all day or or we you know we have a heart attack when we are 36 every one of us be rejuvenated every day that we don't have to work non-stop during our productive years like oh whatever productive means right oh yes well okay i'll work non-stop now and, and then when i'm 36 i'm going to retire <gasps> <laughs> it would require a different attitude towards workers be, where the welfare of people comes before profit so that we actually organize uh, the society around that and a different attitude towards life so it is not divided between working and retiring. What kind of a ridiculous idea was that anyway? Who thought of that one? Where we look at everyone's gifts at any time of life and offer each person the opportunity to express and give those gifts. That children give what they have, that young adults give what they have, that old ladies and men give what they have, at all times in our lives and that we're supported to recognize what those gifts are and to offer them so in this brief discussion i have shown i hope that most of us have retreated from the dream for all of us if we ever had it into the dream for me and why have we done that and it looks like we have another uh a a noob or however you, what your name really is supposed to be pronounced like a uh, Anup Anup. Wow, amazing granny. Thank you, friend. Thank you. So why have we retreated from that collective dream? One, and this is just a few, because we don't believe that anyone else is fighting for us. So we have to fight for ourselves. We don't, we're not trained to think this way and we don't have that experience. Oh, I don't see everybody, you know, maybe in the union movement or something like that. Okay, we went out on strike. We were all fighting for better wages for everyone. But even there, I mean, I was in the unions, you know, okay, so the women were doing one kind of job and the men were doing the other kind of job and the men were making more money with the women. I mean, even then, right? So we don't believe that anyone is fighting for us. I wonder why. I wonder why. Maybe that's because that's our experience in life, because everybody is fighting with us, because we're all competing. Two, because we don't feel safe enough to stop fighting. Oh, if I stop fighting for me, what's going to happen to me? Oh, if I don't compete to get my on uh, America's Got Talent, who's ever going to listen to me? Right? Right? Okay, three. Because we have not been taught that what we need is a society that focuses on the highest good of all, because the highest good of all includes me automatically. Oh my goodness. How can that be? Well, it can be. We just think about what is for the highest good of all, and it includes me because I'm part of the all, because we are fed, and this is number four, because we are fed and have been fed the poison of competitiveness for most all of our lives, if not all of our lives. That makes everybody my competitor, everybody my enemy, even though you're my friend, you know, outside, but when we get on the ice rink, move aside. I may cheer if you win, but I'll still be crying, right? Because we have a system where one person wins and everybody else loses. We have been fed the poison of competitiveness for most of all of our lives, whether we're talking about in academics or we were competing for our parents' love or we were competing for something else. So, guys, in honor of Martin Luther King Day, his birthday, which is not today, but we honor it today, I would like to invite us to have a dream and follow our dream but we need to transform that dream so that it includes all, all of us. And now I'm going to get to the why of all of this, which goes back to what I was talking about before, that Martin Luther King spoke in 1963 about having a dream 
and someone shot him in 1968 who did not share that dream. Because if everyone has a stake in fulfilling that collective dream, then there won't be people who don't share the dream. And they will not feel left out and they will not feel threatened because we have to educate ourselves and one another to this concept that we can have a collective dream that we all have a stake in. Like we're all raising the barn. We're all trying to bring the crops in. You know, experiences that we also know. And then we will not be assassinating each other, but we will be working together, bringing together our power and our forces so that we can all get what we truly need. And Island said, I'll watch later. And she sent us all kinds of love. And it's a great, great dream. Thank so, you. Something for all of us. And it's the only thing that will work. Mm -hmm. Because every time I fight for my personal dream, there is somebody out there who's fighting against it. Because then they feel like they're left out. This is just common sense. Mm. So come back every Monday and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time for Inner Revolution, Changing the World from the Inside Out. I hope that you have really enjoyed what I said. And Island said, I have a dream that we'll all have universal health care. I agree with you. Yeah, universal right quality health care. Yeah. Absolutely. I shared that dream. Come back soon. Share this show. Put in your comments. Like it. Love it. Follow our page. And go to my website, bethgreen.org, www.bethgreen.org. There you can learn about how you can participate, uh, how you can sign up for the mailing list and get free books. And you can sign up for sessions because I'm an excellent counselor. I can really help you. If you want to change, I can help you. And where you can also make a tax-deductible donation if you are in the U.S., but you can make a not tax deductible donation of any size and it will be appreciated. And Todd gave us three thumbs up, three thumbs up to you, Todd. Bye-bye. Bye-bye for now.